So it's safe to say that we've had a pretty wet start to the year, not just in the amount of rain that we've got, but it's remained quite humid too. Now in previous years I've been able to leave my tools in their respective drawers without having to worry about them rusting, but this year I've had to be a lot more mindful about keeping everything wrapped up in oil. Now all of that does work, but it does mean that I have to clean off the tools before I use them, and then reapply oil before putting them away. And doing that every time is a bit tedious. Now back in January, I was experimenting with electroplating steel parts in nickel. Nickel plating is relatively straightforward to do in a home workshop, if your end goal is to get a rust protective coating. And by that I mean it works really well at protecting from rust, you know the nickel isn't going to corrode, at least at room temperature, but it's not going to be a hard nickel coating, which can be found on a lot of tools. However, the biggest challenge that I found with the whole process was getting a consistent and even coat on my parts, especially when the shapes started to become large and quite complex. But at least for what it's worth, the end result was still quite good. For instance, I electroplated the quick change tool post and its tool holder because they were showing signs of wear, and ever since I did that, they've been holding up really well. There's been no signs of rust, and the electroplating has held up quite well. And at the same time I did this, I also did a quick dive into the subject of bluing to see how effective it is when you compare it to plating. And off the bat, I'm pretty familiar with it since a lot of my tools come with some sort of black oxide or I guess blue finish. At least to me, I think a black oxide or a blue finish makes the tool look really nice, and depending on the method, it is pretty inexpensive to do, at least on a commercial scale, and it does offer some level of rust protection. For instance, I've had all these tools for quite a few years, and they stayed rust free. Obviously, if I left them outside, they would start to rust, but inside the workshop, they are pretty well protected from any moisture. So I guess the next question is, well, can we do this in a home workshop? And the answer is, like a lot of things that we do, a resounding yes, maybe. Which I guess really isn't helpful, but let me explain. There's several different types of bluing, or I guess blacking steel, and those methods have their own pros and cons, and some of them can and can't be used in a home workshop. So in order to test out the methods, the first thing I did was I cut several blanks from a piece of mild steel rod. And these are going to serve as our test parts. The important part is I am going to sand them to 1200 grit because the surface finish of the part is going to determine the final finish of the blue. And once I've done that, I'll mark out each one with a center punch so we know which type of bluing is on each part. Now the first method we'll look at is going to be cold bluing, which is probably the most popular method online, and the most popular method for a small workshop, and that's probably because it's the most straightforward method, it's probably one of the quickest, and it can be done at room temperature. So the first thing we need to buy is a jar of cold blue, and that's about it mostly. The stuff I picked up is called super blue, and it's primarily made for touching up scrapes and scratches on firearms, or at least firearms that have bluing, but really most people just use it for bluing pretty much whatever they got. The main thing being is that it needs to be made of steel. And this bottle that's about 90 mils was about 30 bucks. Now this stuff here is made by Birchwood Casey, and from what I understand, it's not the greatest bluing compound. But unfortunately, I don't have a huge range to choose from, so this will have to do. Now the first thing we need to do is clean the part to remove any grease or oil. The cold blue needs a very clean surface to get a uniform finish, and any oil is going to show up as a discoloured splotch, and it's going to be very noticeable on the finished part. My normal go-to is a lot of acetone to clean it, and that usually does a pretty good job. I'll then get a small glass jar, and I'll pour in a small amount of cold blue. I'll then use a small brush to coat the part with the cold blue, and you'll quickly see the part turn a deep blue-black. And the aim here is to keep brushing the part until it's fully done reacting with the steel. Once that's done, you can simply rub it off. At this point, the part is now blued, but it's not rust-resistant yet, because at least for this type of bluing, the rust protection doesn't come from the black finish itself, but it comes from the oil, which we now need to add. I normally use 3-in-1 oil, which seems to work, but everyone does have their special type of oil, which they deem to be the best. The important thing, though, is to leave it covered in the oil for a few hours, 
Some people do it overnight, some people do it for 24 hours. I normally just leave it overnight and then brush it off the next morning. As I understand it, the black coating is slightly porous and it's able to suck up some of the oil and retain it and that's what gives it its rust protection. Although I should point out that this isn't going to make the steel feel oily when you touch it. Now as it is at the moment, the bluing has been done and it certainly has made the steel dark and somewhat rust resistant, but at least to me, I would like it to be a little bit darker than it is at the moment. Now the way to make it darker is instead of adding oil after we give it its first coat of cold blue, we want to go ahead and use some scotch bright or maybe some steel wool to rough up the surface before covering it in another layer of cold blue. If you do this correctly, when you add the next coating of cold blue, the steel is going to get noticeably darker than it was before. At least for me when I cold blue, I try to do it at least two times and that gets me the colour that I'm looking for. Now as for the rest of the cold blue, as far as I understand it, you're not supposed to put it back in the container. Something to do with the fact that it's reacting with the steel and you don't want to put that back into the container. So it really is important to pour out only as much as you think that you're going to use when dealing with cold blue. Thankfully though, when we're dealing with small parts, we only need to use a small amount of cold blue. However, if we needed to blue a lot of larger parts, it can very quickly become expensive. What I've seen a few people do is they'll wait to make a few parts that need bluing and then they'll blue them all at once. So you aren't wasting any, or I guess you're making better use of the available blue that you do have. I think it's for this reason that this stuff is mainly sold for touch-ups, because if this was the normal go-to, it would be pretty darn expensive to blue stuff. And at least when it comes to touching up tools, I think it works pretty well at doing that. You can see there is a fair amount of wear to the boring bar, but it only takes a very small amount of blue to make it look almost new again. I'll also point out that this stuff is not indestructible and it seems to be a lot softer than a factory blue. It's not really scientific but a knife blade will scratch it and it will remove it. I also think it's worth pointing out that this stuff technically isn't blue if you go by the traditional definition where bluing uses a black iron oxide to make the coating. From what I've read, this stuff here is selenium dioxide which binds to the surface of the steel and it leaves this porous black finish which can absorb oil. It looks very similar to a traditional blued surface, but it technically isn't. But for what it's worth, it does seem to absorb oil and it does seem to resist rust. However, I do think it is at least worth exploring the other types of bluing to see what their advantages and disadvantages are over cold bluing. So the next one we'll take a look at is hot oil bluing, which again, strictly speaking, isn't actually a proper type of bluing procedure, but I and many other people have used this to good effect. Mostly because it is pretty easy to do and you don't need a huge amount of stuff to do it. All you really need is a part that's obviously properly cleaned, a propane torch or similar, and you also need a bucket of oil. I'm using vegetable oil here, but in the past I have used linseed oil which seemed to work a lot better than this. Now all you have to do now is heat up the part and then dunk it in the oil. The only real skill in doing this is making sure the part has even heat coverage and making sure that it is at the correct temperature before you dunk it. If the part's too cold, this simply won't work and if the part is too hot, I find that it simply burns up any oil and it becomes sticky. As you'll see here, I dropped the part in that was way too hot and that's the result. I've found that the right temperature is when you're heating up the part, when the oxide starts changing colour and it becomes that dark grey, that's about the right temperature to dunk the part. Now what's happening here is the heat of the steel is polymerising all the oil that's sticking to it and it's forming a protective layer around the steel. Pretty much the same process as when you need to season a cast iron skillet. And much like seasoning a cast iron skillet, I like to clean off all the oil and repeat the process, doing it at least two or three times in total. That way you get a much nicer and darker finish, and I think the coating is a little bit stronger. Just make sure to clean off all the oil before you heat it up again, otherwise it will form sticky splotches that you can't get rid of. And just like that, we now have our part that's been hot oil blued. Visually, I much prefer the look of it compared to the cold blue. You know, the cold blue has this off blue sheen to it, whilst the hot blue is a much more deep and much more consistent black. 
And this should also be a lot more rust resistant than the cold blue. I've done this quite a few times in the past, and the parts that have been hot oil blued have seemed to resist rust quite well. However, there are two or three downsides to this method. One being that it's mostly used for parts that are made of mild steel, or I guess parts where heat treatment isn't a huge factor. Because obviously you're going to be heating this up to at least four or 500 degrees, and you're going to be doing this several times. And doing this is going to ruin any temper that you're going to have on a carbon steel part. And obviously quenching it in oil from four or 500 degrees isn't going to be hot enough to form the internal microstructure that is needed to harden the part. But at least for me, this isn't a huge deal because most of the parts I make are made from mild steel and mild steel isn't really affected by quenching parts in oil. However, you are going to risk warping the part, so I wouldn't do this on parts that require a super tight tolerance. Finally, the coating isn't going to be as durable as the cold blue. You know, we're relying on the part to stick to the surface of the steel and it is going to have trouble doing that, especially on very shiny parts. Obviously, it's not going to flake off, but if some metal scratches it, it is going to come off a lot easier than, say, the cold blue. Now, I have found that it does stick a bit better if you stick to, say, 120 grit sandpaper. It gives the coating something to bite into. But then again, you are going to be sacrificing the surface finish, and you will see that brushed finish show through on the final part. So having now looked at two methods that aren't exactly bluing, let's finally look at a proper method that gives us a proper blue, or I guess a black oxide. And here, there are two main methods that are used. There's rust bluing, and then there's hot caustic bluing. And as I understand it, they should produce near enough the exact same finish. Let's start off with rust bluing, because out of the two of them, it's the only one that is really suited to a small home workshop. What we need to do is get our blank and get it covered in a very even coat of rust. It sounds a bit counterintuitive, but there is a reason for it. Now to do this very quickly, we can make up a rusting solution. There are a few different recipes online, but I found that a mixture of 10 parts sodium peroxide to 5 parts vinegar and 1 part salt works really well. I'll coat the part in the solution and almost instantly it's going to turn a very deep rust brown and the important thing here is to make sure you get a very good and even coating. Once the part is all rusted up, I'll drop it in a hot pot of boiling water. Now this will only take a minute or so, but what's happening here is the rust, or iron 3 oxide, is going to be converted into manganite. It is still a form of iron oxide, but it is one that is a lot more stable than iron 3 oxide, and much like the cold blue, it's porous and it's able to retain oil to give us that rust protection. Unfortunately though, one coating is going to give us a relatively poor finish, you know, it's more brown than it is black, so what we have to do here is scratch it with some scotch Bright or some steel wool, and then we need to repeat the process at least three or four times to get us a black finish. And even then, doing it four or five times, I can definitely see that there is a lot more to come out of this. And I think that is the biggest downside of doing this. It is a very slow process, and unless you keep going at it, it's not going to be a super black finish, at least when you compare it to the other two methods that we've done. But in at least two respects, I think this is the best method. Because one, this is actually a properly bonded oxide, and it's actually relatively hard, which means it's going to be a lot more durable than either the hot blue or the cold blue. Reason number two is it works pretty well at resisting corrosion. You see, I've left these samples on a shelf next to the workshop door since the beginning of January, and they've all dealt with wind, rain, and moisture. As you can see, the cold blue has fared the worst, but it still has done a pretty good job, but it still developed a little bit of rust. The hot oil bluing has also worked out quite well. It's developed a few spots of rust, and that's mostly around the areas that suffered a small amount of damage and the bluing flaked off. The rust bluing, however, seems to have worked out the best. It stopped most of the corrosion from forming. However, it did discolor from that dark black to a more grayish color. However, once I applied a bit more oil, the bluing turned back to its original color and looked as good as it did before. And really, if there was any new rust, I could really just put it in the boiling water and convert that to manganite. The final method worth talking about, and really we're only going to talk about it, is the industrial method. It's commonly called hot bluing, or hot caustic bluing, and it's used to give parts that black oxide finish, and it does it quickly and cheaply.
What you do is you take the part that you need to coat and you submerge it in a bath of sodium hydroxide, aka drain cleaner. However, the bath needs to be held at 140 degrees Celsius and the concentration of sodium hydroxide needs to be very closely monitored. Boiling sodium hydroxide is frankly nasty and very dangerous stuff and the last thing I would want is a big tub of it in my workshop. Not to mention that it also would release vapours into the shop. Now on an industrial scale, this is a great method since you can very easily blue large volumes of parts in a relatively short amount of time and you can get a very deep dark black oxide. But at least in the home workshop, it is something that I would not recommend that you do. Now there are seemingly a few other methods out there with pros and cons, but for what it's worth, they're not really home shop oriented or they don't have enough upsides to warrant exploring in this video. At least for me, I think the methods that I discussed here should be good enough for the home workshop use and they should all be good enough at preventing corrosion. For me, I think cold bluing is the best option unless I need to coat something that's very large where cold bluing would be at least not economical. And at that part, I think rust bluing is probably the next best option. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week.